running up the score. You're listening to the Running Up the Score podcast. Now here's your hosts, Jerry Napoleonello and Kevin Donlin. All right, we are back. Guys, guess who I have back in the building for the first time in a little while. It's nice. Kevin is back. What's up, guys? Yes, sir. And it's going to be uh, the first of many uh, different changes to the show. I was talking about it last week. Now we're going to be about it this week. So uh, we got a lot going on. I, we have a lot of talking points uh, today between yeah, a lot to get into. Us being a week away from never having a Sunday list NFL till February of 2023. Yeah, you better you I, I better mean, get that wording correct. Yeah, Thursday is the start of football. <laughs> well, yeah, technically. Uh, yeah, so it's it's definitely a great time. To be a football fan. We have a lot to talk about. We're going to get into some card stuff. We're going to get into some Madden as well. You know, and then regular NFL stuff. And then, of course, guys, I know your drafts are coming up. And who better to hear from than the fantasy guru himself, Kevin Donald? Yeah, not after last year. <laughs> last year was terrible. One of the worst years ever. But, yes, well prepared this year, guys. We yes. are in good hands. And we're going to make it happen. All right. Let's get right into it. All right. So, you know, obviously talking about, you know, when we get into like cards and stuff like that, you know, we talk about how weak this draft class has been. But there's one guy that is kind of, you know, leaving hope for this draft class. And that's Kenny Pickett. So now when we're talking about Kenny Pickett, we're talking about the, the QB, um, you know, competition that he's got going on in Pittsburgh. With Mitchell Trubisky, it looks like Trubisky is going to be starting week one. How long that lasts is left to be seen. Yeah, I feel like he's kind of going under the radar. But, uh, you know, just from watching him in the preseason, uh, just play with a lot of confidence. And sometimes in the NFL, that's really half the battle. And he has done it over and over again. This wasn't a one-time occurrence I saw. So, you know, Kenny Pickett early on, uh, especially in Dynasty Leagues, fantasy football aspect, uh, definitely a a good stash for uh, especially two quarterback leagues, stuff like that. Um, but he has been unbelievable on the field. I'm, I'm not, I'm not lessening the value of anybody in Pittsburgh yeah. based on the fact that he could eventually be the quarterback of the team. So uh, I still, you know, I still fire away at Deontay Johnson, uh, Najee Harris coming with some kind of, uh, you know, issues with his, uh, you know, let you know, list Frank. Yeah, but that's not something that you want to be messing around. Yeah, with. no, especially you know, like the you know, it's just a. You got to run. So, uh, <laughs> but even like Chase Claypool, but another I don't, guy. Yeah, I'm not doubting any of them. I yeah. mean, uh, George Pickens, even uh, their third wide receiver, guy that just I haven't I haven't really seen him make a catch. I just see him completely trucking cornerbacks yeah. every time you get an opportunity. <laughs> That's all I see on the internet these well, days. Well, they're, so. they're showing basically, you know, are we going to have Pickett to Pickens for a long time coming? That'll be annoying uh, for the announcers, yeah. but <laughs> yeah. but no, Kenny Pickett again. I'm a uh, you know, I'm really high on Kenny Pickett. Uh, big fan of him, just from what I've seen. You know, I mean, from his demeanor on the field and off. They both played very well in the preseason, so I give that to Mitchell Trubisky. And I think they just kind of went with you know the experience to start off. But I don't see it lasting past week three. I say, I say, we see. We'll see what happens because uh, obviously Pittsburgh's a good team. They have a good team, top to bottom. Uh, they're going to win games regardless. And I think, you know, sometimes you need your quarterback to just basically manage. Uh, that offensive line is going to have to be better. Um, but Pittsburgh, you know, defensively, they're going to keep you in games. So, you know, I'm looking at a lot of low-scoring affairs from them. But, uh, you know, they should be getting some wins along the line. So it'll, well, yeah, be, it'll be tough to see when the time will come for Kenny Pickett. You never see a team win and then change their quarterback while they're winning. Well, yeah. So that's uh I, I we'll mean, see, but I mean the this, issue again farther just going, you know, this kid's going to be good. Yeah, it's just and a matter of when. I think it just comes down to also uh how Mike Tomlin's going to be able to um uh, deal with the 
the pressure from the crowd because, I mean, we saw it in preseason. Every time Pickett hit the field, the place went nuts. And, you know, they were cheering for him. You know, they were chanting his name and everything. So it's, it's going to come down to that. If they lose one game, lose two games, and Trubisky doesn't play well, he's going to be hearing it. So it, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. But I'm going to say my prediction is going to say week three, we see Kenny Pickett on the field, number eight behind center. Uh, so we go from a rookie quarterback to a very veteran, you know, um, long time great quarterback. Russell Wilson gets an extension. Quick talk about that. Listen, Denver's going to be really good this year. Denver's going to be really good this year, and they're a scary, you know, a scary sleeper team. I, and I, I mean, I don't even know if you could call them a sleeper team, but they're they're going to be dangerous now because well, they they were winning games with Drew Locke at quarterback. And now they have one of the better quarterbacks in the league. Absolutely. I mean, you see the difference that Russell Wilson brings. I mean, even, uh, you know, we go even beyond that into a fantasy aspect where you yeah. see guys like Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy being drafted like DK Metcalf and Lockett, where this year it's almost like a complete switch among those four players. Uh, you know, wherever you were valuing Metcalf, you're going to value Judy and Cortland Sutton yeah. at this point. And Tyler Lockett wasn't far behind. So, again, that's the impact that Russell Wilson brings. I think Denver – is going to be a very, very good team. It's just going to be very difficult for this team on the basis that the division the they're division in right is now is at another level of talent. <laughs> so know. between, you know, the Chargers, Raiders, Chiefs, and themselves, it's it's going to be a it's going to be one hell of a war. Absolutely. Um, we were – so I kind of touched on it last week, uh, talking about Zach Wilson, his injury, you know, issue. There was still talks. You know, Robert Salah also brought up, you know, we're not, we're not saying he's not going to be there week one. There's a possibility that Zach Wilson is under center week one. Do I think that's going to happen? No, uh, but there's a possibility. I, I honestly, from a Jet fan perspective, I think the the best odds are that you know he's probably going to miss week one, and that's just playing it safe at that yeah. point. I mean, I see him walking around, uh, no limp, no nothing. Um, this is just to make sure he's healthy. I think week one. Uh, is probably going to go to Joe Flacco, and from a Jet fan perspective, you can't ask for anything better. Yeah. You know, you're looking at a, uh, you know, Joe Flacco going up against his former team. You know, Season he's at bet. home, he's yeah. in New York. It's not in Baltimore. He's not, a, you know, in front of those fans or anything like that. This is a game the New York Jets can find a way to win. I was looking at this. Uh, you look at this game on the schedule, and you look at like all these like pools that people are in and stuff like that, and uh, you know, especially suicide pools. Uh, you know, you see a lot of people going to take Baltimore in uh, Week One. Um, it's going to be a tough, a tough game on the road for them. Regardless, I yeah. see the spread being at seven, eight points. But you know, as far as you know, Joe Flacco is not a, not a nobody. I mean, the guy no. knows how to win a football game. So, you know, there's a and very listen, talented roster with New York this year. A lot uh, more talented than it ever has yeah. been. So it'll be a tough uh, Week One for the Ravens and a tough Week One for obviously the New York Jets as well. I said it last week. I think the Jets. If they didn't have the best draft, they had a top three draft this this past year. Um, so you know they 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 helped the spots on the roster that they needed. They desperately needed. Uh, you know the thing is with you know them going up against Baltimore. Yeah, that like when you know just bringing up suicide pools and, and stuff like that. They don't have a starting running back right now either. No, J.K. Dobbins, Dobbins. They're hoping to play. In I know, week one. but I was watching a video of him training. Did. He was hurt, like he was limping. Yeah, so he that's said, like. Well, he posted about that actually too, and you know this is where drama comes into well, the yeah, NFL. And it's a little pathetic, but uh, I got guys, you know, they're tweeting and they're just saying, uh, you know, you know, I'm just stretching it. He yeah. said he was more along the lines of, "That's not a limp. Uh, yeah. Like I can promise you that I'm fine." Da, da, da. But again, it's there's just, still a question mark. It's that, always a question mark yeah. with them going. I mean, it's it's questioning how much they're gonna you know, of the load they're gonna give him. There's no there's no denying what he's you know coming back from. So obviously, uh, again, and a I, very I, uh, tricky situation. With when it comes to J.K. Dobbins, you know, the, a lot of people are high on him. A lot of people are high on him this year, especially just basically saying he could be the comeback player of the year. Like that, he he could have that kind of season. Well, Baltimore's so it's, got that it's, offensive line to make yeah. that happen. So, and so. so that's that's the difference maker that he can make going into this game. And now, you know, as I was saying, going into the suicide pools and stuff like that, betting as a whole, I have, you know, my own kind of rule. 
You never bet with or against the Jets, and you never bet with or against the Giants. They always screw you in the end. I got one rule, too. It's never bet week one because there's (laughs) so much unpredictability in week one. If you're looking to bet in week one, the odds are to take these big dogs, yeah. you know, at this well, point in, because are, are you in a survivor pool? Yeah, I you know, obviously Who won it last year, so I'm going back to back. Uh you know, for me in week one I think it's a no doubt um I'm going for back to back oh. Yeah, what do you mean? <laughs> Is there, is there a concern there? <laughs> no, it was. Uh, well, I, I'm it really was, have, dude. Uh, it was a crazy. You know, to win in one is yeah. insane. But the way it's I tough. won it, yeah, there was one. There was one week where Detroit took on Baltimore, and you know Tucker hit a field goal that hit the upright and went in. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you know, could have went the other way, and I, I, that was week four, and yeah. I wound up going the whole year with it. So it's just you know more luck than luck. anything yeah. else. So and week 1 is the toughest week obviously to pick those teams, but uh, a team I'm staying away from obviously is Baltimore, but a team I'm firing away, you, know, you fire away it's, you know, uh I think it's going to be Cincy, right, taking on Pittsburgh at home. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's a game. I know it's a division game. It's a very tough game to take. Uh you know, I know people taking it, but I obviously didn't pull the trigger on that. I'm a big fan of Denver. Um they like will be Denver. uh they're on the road, so it's not easy at all, but it's against Seattle. Russell Wilson returns to Seattle. I think he returns to a an ovation on the on account that they you know, they've won a Super Bowl with him. So uh <laughs> should have won two. Yeah, they should have won two, but they obviously <laughs> did win one and yeah. that, that's enough to get a good uh you know, feedback from the fans at some point. So uh I think that's a good pick going on. Um another pick I had that was interesting was uh San Fran. They are taking on the Bears. Uh, I just don't think the Bears are a good team this year. But again, this is an you know an unpredictable league, you know, so you never know what could happen week one. I'm pretty sure the Bears are at home. That's another tough play. Uh, week one is very difficult in suicide pools. Yeah, but uh, my best picks, I would probably go with Denver or the San Francisco 49ers. So speaking of the seven, uh, the 49ers, Jimmy G restructured his contract. He is staying now in San Francisco. Now, now my question was. And I guess my thought was, is Jimmy G restructuring to stay or is it making his contract better to get rid of? And that's my question, because now that is a big that has a big impact on my next question. What are we thinking about Trey Lance now? Because I was very high on him. I I thought. You know, the 49ers have a Super Bowl roster. Like, they have that good of a team. And all they need is a quarterback that plays a little bit better than average. (laughs) You know, know, in regards to Jimmy Garoppolo's contract, there's really not much to even really discuss with this. And I know it makes concern for Trey Lance, but there's no concern with Trey Lance. I think it's a simple matter of fact that someone was in that office one day and said, well... You know, Trey Lance likes to run with the football. What if he gets hurt? Yeah. And you need a capable backup in the NFL. Go look at the New York Jets, what we just talked about just now. Uh, You do need a capable backup. I mean, look at the Cowboys. And look at Pittsburgh. (laughs) We look at Trubitsky. We look at, you know, obviously Kenny Pickett. You look at two quarterbacks that possibly could be the guy. You know, you got to have a capable backup. If you don't, you're in a lot of trouble. Cowboys don't even have a backup. Yeah, That's how bad it is. No, yeah, no, we know. (laughs) We know about the Cowboys. (laughs) We already but, know. So, you know, that that was my only question because, you know, with Trey Lance now, I have some money in him, you know, when there's it comes no, to the there's hobby. There's no concern with him. There's no, I, oh, yeah, of course. No, you know, and that's, that, that's where it comes, like, well, you know, now that we value, have a different The value you know, for that investment. card, at this point, the value for that card just bases on how he's going to play. Yeah. And if you think he's going to play well, and just like every 49er coach thinks he's going to play well, I'd be very confident in that right now. I think uh, – I think the 49ers have a really good coaching staff. It's, they're going to make this easy for Trey Lance to be I feel successful. Like, I feel like this is like the perfect, um, you know, because cause Shanahan came in when Kaepernick was the quarterback, mm-hmm. right? I don't, so, I don't remember. I, I'm trying to think if that was, if that was you know, true. Um, because you can kind of use Trey Lance in the same way that they used – Kaepernick and I think it's going to be a different like I mean Elijah Mitchell I think is going to have a good year for them their front line is very good uh, their defense is very good like we said all we need you know all they needed was 
a quarterback to play a little bit better than decent. Because last year in the playoffs, Jimmy Garoppolo was horrible. And they still made it to the you know the NFC Championship. Mm-hmm. So, I you know that's that's where it comes down to like you know, and they beat my Cowboys. I don't know. I don't know. It's not. Well, I'll be honest. You know, it's just it's one of those where you know there really just shouldn't be any concern. I'll yeah, I, I mean that's th- really what it comes down to. I think Trey Lance is going to be fine. I think anyone who owns Trey Lance cards, uh, looking to flip those kind of cards, you really just need to see you know productivity on the field. You need to see wins. I mean, a guy starts off and starts his career ten and zero. You know, all of a sudden his card value starts to go higher on that basis alone, and it's an understandable yeah. uh, statement to make. And that's why you go out and get that card, and you yeah. go out and try to chase that card and obviously the 49ers have been a big team in uh nfl card breaks so obviously there's plenty of reason to have the value on him right now but it really comes down to how he's going to perform i think this signing of jimmy garoppolo means absolutely nothing i don't think it it doubts their confidence in him um it really is just a mere fact of having a backup capable quarterback especially when your number one quarterback is someone that likes to run with the football yeah so in other uh i mean it it's bad news for some of the people in the hobby that have invested in Kellen Mond and Ian Book. You know, these two, you know, you get into, you know, as, as I spoke about last week, uh, you know, basically what card breaks are. So you get into a break, and when you get the Saints, you got the, the Vikings, your looks were like, all right, well, we can get J. Jeff, we can get Kellen Mond, we can get Ian Book on that side too. Mm-hmm. And... You know, you pull an Ian Book, ah, you know, that's great. We could sell him for, you know, a decent amount. Uh, you know, Kellen Mond, we could sell, you know, we can buy him low, but we can also eventually sell him high. And Ian Book and Kellen Mond were released. Uh, I think they were put on practice squads. Uh, Kellen Mond was claimed by the Browns. Uh, I didn't see who Ian Book was picked up by. But, yeah, they're, it kind of sucks in terms of people – that have invested, but this is, you know, this is when it comes down to, we, we talk about betting. We talk about, ga- like we talk about gambling. We talk about fantasy. We talk about cards, all of which it's a gamble. It really is a gamble. And you have to like, you have to try to, to make a, a good investment, I guess, but of there's course. a chance that, you know, well, speaking of these good investments, I want to give out a yeah. release dates. I mean, you might oh, as yeah. well right now coming Absolutely. out, uh, just came out on September 2nd is a 2021 Panini Select Football H2 officially released as well as a 2021 2022 Panini Don Ross Optic Basketball that was released on the 2nd. That was going for about $700. Still to come out the 2022, we talked about this before Tops Museum Collection Baseball release for 9.7. That's going to go for $395. we are looking for you know, that comes with one autograph relic one on-card autograph uh, one quad relic and one relic coming in each box, uh, and as well as 2022 Panini Don Ross Elite Football release that'll be released on nine nine three hundred and fifty dollars. Again, five cards per pack, twenty packs per box, twelve boxes per case, two autos, one memo. Uh, you know, three rookies, six parallels, and I think eleven inserts. Yes, yeah, eleven so. inserts. Uh, obviously, uh, from a selling point. Uh, Coming out very shortly on the 9th. That's going to be going for about $350. So, guys, these are the new boxes coming out. Get prepared. You will start to see these in your, your local breaks. breaks. Yeah. yeah. So, when it comes to, like, this is this is the thing. So, now you're, you're starting to see some of the 2022 football boxes come out. Uh, the select box was the last of the 2021. That is was that's going for $1,600. So if you get an H2, which they consider a a hobby, so it's kind of like split between a retail and a hobby. Um, So like we said, you know, you get six cards per pack, four packs per box, 20 boxes per case. Uh, You get two silver prisms per box and four disco prisms. There are autos uh, live in this. You know, the biggest thing with select, as I said, you know, we were talking about it off air. You know, the biggest thing with Select was that the XRCs that usually in the past, because they would release this before the draft, the XRCs would be a redemption. So you get a redemption and it would say QB1, QB2, RB1, RB2. So it would depend on who was drafted, who was the first quarterback drafted, who was the second quarterback drafted, etc. So 
you know, the fact that select now was delayed, you know, all the way to the end was the last to, to be released. All the XRCs were live. So you have Kenny Pickett autos. You have, you know, um, in the box. De- yeah. You have Desmond Ritter. You have, you know, all these guys in their NFL uniforms on card. I mean, it's, if I was Panini, I would look to release this the same time every year now. Yes. You know, to make sure that those XRCs. And it stays consistent, yeah. 100%. You know, uh, it's. I, I, I think right now the NFL players you're looking for and that you're chasing now, uh, I think a lot of people are sometimes like not familiar with uh, what players are being chased in these new boxes. Obviously, the XRCs. Uh, you know, teams that are big time, you know, obviously Pittsburgh with Kenny Pickett, the Titans with Malik Willis, uh, Falcons, even greater box. Cause now you're looking at Kyle Pitts, rookie cards, as well as an XRC of Drake London, uh, or Desmond Ritter too, or Desmond Ritter, who was actually really hyped up, uh, thanks to Matt in 2023. <laughs> yeah. Um, obviously there was a card of him that was available early on. Uh, he was a he had some wheels on him, and obviously, from anyone who's ever played Madden, especially in the Michael Vick era, uh, you know that speed with your quarterback is uh, quite Huge. valuable in Madden. Yeah. Uh, you know, but the players that we're looking to actually invest in are these XRCs. Uh, they're the ones that are going to go for a lot of money, especially I, the autos. I honestly think uh, this is going to make it a little bit more interesting because of the draft class being so weak. I think you're going to start to see like some of these got some of these vets that may not have that high of a, you know, ROI on them. I, I think, think you can see like guys, you know, like, you know, just say Russell Wilson or, or you know, guys like that, like Kyle, uh, uh, Kyler Murray. Um, you know, these these players, a lot of people are either going to start PCing a lot more. Or they're going to start buying to like flip these guys, you know, after big games. Of course. So you're going to see that a lot now. Because but I mean, of, and it's not necessarily saying that this is a weak draft class. No, I mean, I'll be we honest, have no there's idea. A, there's a no lot idea. of talent in there. There's Drake London. Yeah. There's Jamison Williams. Well, that's the there's thing. A it's a lot, lot of, of wide receivers. Yes. It's a very wide receiver heavy. So we mm-hmm. might start seeing, you, you might start seeing Jamar Chase go up in price. Jay Jeff go up in price. CD Lamb go up in price. Yep. You know, you're going to start to see a lot of, you know, the, they were talking about chasing quarterbacks, but we were chasing wide receivers for exactly. the past two years, and we continue to do that. Uh, their numbers continue to go up. The one thing I've noticed, and I want to just transition to fantasy football for one second, is really my main goal. We'll talk about this real quick. We want to really go into a very uh, solidified fantasy segment. Um, the best way I could tell uh, the listeners right now and how to prepare for your fantasy football draft this season, uh, probably the best approach at this point is uh, – Running backs are very scarce. They run out real quick. Uh, there are plenty of wide receivers in the league this year. Um, plenty. There's necessarily a couple going in the uh, top five, and rightfully so. Guys like Cup, Jefferson, these guys are can't-miss players. But there's a lot of wide receiver depth in uh, fantasy football this season. I think running backs are just too imperative. to. You really need to take care of that early on. Uh, I think quarterback, you can afford to wait a little while. Like guys like uh, Kyle Murray going in the sixth, Russell Wilson going in the seventh, eighth. Uh, these are good draft picks um, that late in the draft. Um, but I think from that point, a lot of wide receivers. One that I really, really like is uh, uh, DeAndre Hopkins. Now, a lot of people – hear this name they go oh well he's suspended for six weeks that's not good he's gonna miss half my season uh you know for the ninth round you're talking about someone that should not be in your original starting lineup therefore uh you know unless you're drafting multiple tight ends or maybe even three running backs you got that flex covered you need to make sure you have a very well-mannered team before you grab someone like DeAndre Hopkins but at that point you need to understand that come week seven of the NFL season you know you have a healthy number one wide receiver in the NFL. Uh, that is so important. I mean, you talk to people right now, and they're like, oh, I don't like that right now. He's already missing six weeks. It's like he's already been hurt. It's like, okay, but you could draft someone else earlier that's going to end up potentially being hurt before that week seven mark, and you'll see the value just adjust. And obviously, as we continue this podcast, I'll continue to bring up certain aspects where I'm able to reflect on that. But to make sure that you have a healthy wide receiver come week seven. I mean, this guy isn't hurt. 
No. He's not coming back no. from an injury. He's not going to be coming back to, you know, 10 to 15 plays in a game, and it's very hard to manage the injury. He's literally suspended. He is running every day. He is keeping in game shape. There's no doubt about it that come the time, DeAndre Hopkins will be more than ready to go. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to, like, these older guys now, you're starting to see, like, you know, just say they were suspended. I mean, a perfect example was Tom Brady when he was suspended for the first four games. It was like – it was like a, a vacation for him. He was, ha- he was, I mean, obviously you don't want to be suspended, but it helped him, you know, because a 16 game season turned into a 12 game season. And then you add the playoffs and it's like you have a full season and that was it. No playoffs. Of course. So it's a big difference on the body on, on everything, especially for a wide receiver too. So, you know, as you were saying, he comes back week seven, you got the saints. That should be a win for them. You got the Vikings. Vikings are going to be tough this year, I will say that. Seahawks should be a win. The Rams are going to be tough. The 49ers are going to be tough. That's in Mexico City. Again, these are not playoff but weeks, though. This is no. towards the end of the season. Now he's but got when, a matchup against the Chargers. He's got a matchup against the Broncos. Yeah. He's got a matchup against the Car- uh, the Patriots. Uh, you know, come playoff time, his playoff weeks are against the Broncos in Denver, which could be tough due to, you know, yeah. intense weather. So I, uh, I can understand... But then you got a showdown against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at home in Arizona. Beautiful weather on Christmas yep. for your fantasy semifinal. I'm going to tell you right now, you don't want a better matchup. If you don't think that the, they're going to need to score or oh, throw yeah. the football in that game. And then they finally finish off with a championship week against the Falcons. And I don't need to question people <laughs> yeah. on how good the, you know, on how bad the Atlanta Falcons are going to be. Yeah. So it makes sense to get this guy in the ninth round. He is my number one sleeper this year. In every draft I've had, I've had him. Uh, so far, I've been consistent on trying to snag up. Uh, you really need to snag up DeAndre Swift. I've heard reports of him being the most overrated running back in football. We talk about players getting older. I like DeAndre Swift. Jamal Williams, I think, is turning 30 years old this year. DeAndre Swift is, what, 26, 27? Yeah. I mean, you know, a lot of people talk about the curve and the, uh, yeah. you know, everyone's talking about Kelsey and the curve of age. But I've seen guys like Tony Gonzalez do it until the second yeah. he was done retired. And Antonio Gates and just a lot of great tight ends. They keep playing well till the end of their career. I mean, look at Rob Gronkowski as well. Yeah. Continued to keep up big games even towards the later half of his career. So 33 years old means nothing for me for for Travis Kelsey, uh, fire away at him at the number one tight end spot. It is not under; it's not undervaluing Mark Andrews. I think I have him almost as a one and a one A. Yeah, I think both of them are going to be very, very good. After that, there is a tremendous drop off, and you would you wouldn't notice it from watching. You know, I've done a couple of fantasy football drafts already, and you see a lot of tight ends start to go in the fourth, fifth round. Names like Kyle Pitts, who I don't know how consistent Marcus Mariota, or how healthy Marcus Mariota. Yeah. I haven't seen Marcus Mariota play in week three of an NFL season, and I don't know how long. Yeah. So, and then I can't name their backup. So Atlanta could be in well, for, and you know, and then you got Drake London potentially uh, making an impact. Drake London was a very good, very young, talented wide receiver. I wanted the Jets to get him in the draft. I was very upset that they couldn't get him. It was a good draft pick by yeah. Atlanta, considering they had so many holes, and they decided oh, yeah, to go definitely. with this man. So, uh you know, for me, guys like Kyle Pitts going in the fourth round, uh, Darren Waller, who is an up and down player enough to begin with last year for anyone who owned I him, and you add Devonte Adams. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I think by adding Devonte Adams opens up a lot more for. Th- and Darren they're going Waller. by a running back by committee, so yeah. they're going to be running the football a lot, especially when you're playing games against Kansas City. You really don't want to even score quickly on a team like Kansas City because you don't want to give that offense to football. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. There's no the preparation that Oakland's going to have is just not going to play for. Darren Waller to keep up these crazy, crazy numbers that he had last year. But again, even last year, it was well, a crazy week or there were weeks where you just didn't know if he even existed. So it's example, really tough. I feel like, you know, when it comes to, um, you know, the Raiders, I think they're going to have to go the, either way. They're going to really. have to throw the ball. Exactly. More, but the truth is, is that Darren Waller, you've seen the best of Darren Waller last year. And if you think yeah. you can go one up from that, I mean, that's on you. But, I mean, the fourth round for that is just not enough. Well, uh, I feel like, again, it comes down to Kelsey and Andrews. And if you can't snag up one of those two, you better pray for Ertz for half a season until yeah. Devon, until uh, DeAndre Hopkins returns. Yeah. That's a possibility I'm liking. Uh, I still have no objection with Dawson Knox. I'm still confused as to his ADP. Uh you know, you fire away at him, but for me, it's literally Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews. If you don't get one of those two, you're talking 
Dawson Knox yeah. in, I mean, almost every league for me. I mean, last year. Josh Allen, so. Yeah, I mean, you got Josh <laughs> Allen's tight end. I mean, you don't mind that. Yeah. Uh, you know, even a possibility maybe taking uh, – Aaron Rodgers is tight end, but again, I'm not going for any of these middle of the pack players. Like Hawkinson's a great player. I mean, again, he'll be good, but he'll be up and down. A lot of the tight ends are usually up and down. I want the guaranteed value. Guys like Kelsey and Andrews are guaranteed value while they're on the field. Yeah. So we're gonna fire off around here. All right. Say you have bring it. You have your draft tonight. You have the number one pick. So a twelve twelve team draft. You got the number one pick, so now we're going to go number one, and then obviously we'll have 12 and one again. Mm-hmm. Who are you going with your first three picks? If with the number one overall pick? With the pick, number one overall pick. Number one pick. overall pick, you're going Jonathan Taylor. Okay. Uh, I think Now, it's why, just, why are you going Jonathan Taylor over uh, Christian McCaffrey? There really is no reason. Yeah, Everyone like, talks about the injury difference. Yeah. Uh, for me, I think the same odds on both of these players – Staying healthy all year long is the same. I think every running back I always value oh, the, yeah, same it's way. the same way. I mean, obviously, you you put some above others based on their injury history, and the truth is, is that Jonathan Taylor has never taken an injury. So, for the fantasy mind, you're seeing it as well. The guy's never been hurt. There's yeah. nothing hurting him. There's yeah. nothing he's recovering from that could possibly get re-injured. Yeah. And there's definitely the understanding there, and that's why Jonathan Taylor slightly goes over Christian McCaffrey. But from a talent standpoint, and what you what to expect from production, there's a possibility that McCaffrey could outscore Jonathan Taylor. And I put him at 1-1A, one one but again, yeah. the, the risk on McCaffrey getting hurt it's as higher. opposed to Jonathan Taylor makes the difference on the 1-2. I, I but I, I'm, though, I'm happy with either player. Yeah. I, I feel as though Matt Ryan makes a difference for Jonathan Taylor. That's the only reason why I kind of, you know, obviously the injury problem is there, but I also feel like. Well, that's why everyone likes Jonathan Taylor so much. I mean, obviously with no quarterback last year. Well, I mean, you know, decent quarterback. Yeah. yeah. Decent quarterback play as opposed to a good quarterback play could be a big difference on, you know, just the play, you know, the defensive play schemes you're going to see going against you. So teams are obviously going to prepare for, uh, Jonathan Taylor. One thing I'm a little concerned about with them is not really the Matt Ryan spreading it out. I mean, yeah, give Matt Ryan all the credit in the world, but Matt Ryan does not have much talent beyond Michael no, I, Pittman. I, I, I mean, this guy Pierce in the third round has to show me something. Like, yeah. there's a lot of unpredictability with the Colts. Me personally, I'm a big fan of the Colts being such a complete team that they have a possibility to win the Super Bowl this year. Yeah, they're like my pick. Well, yeah, if you that were was to your pick, pick last year, well, yeah, <laughs> I mean, you were, yeah. you were high on them. Yeah, I was very even, high on even them, even with Carson Wentz, because they're a very good they're a team. Good team. They have they a lot a good of good. Team. They have a lot of positions filled there, uh, and I'm not just talking on the offensive side because on the offensive side, I think is the question mark. It's the defense that I know they have 100 percent a very talented defense. Yeah. Their division's not really that competitive. The Colts should make the playoffs, no problem. And at that point on, they could be an underrated team that teams might take lightly. That <laughs> you know, obviously, have a good defense, and if you have a good defense in the NFL, you're going to be an any game, all season long, no matter who you play. You could play Tom Brady, play a good defense, and go look at what the New York Giants And Again, I'm never going to forget that because I watched the best offense ever exist be stopped because of defense. Yeah. I mean, there's no doubt that New England was unstoppable oh, that yeah, year. Yeah. So, and I, again, I'm, I'm a Jet fan. I'm not hyping up any team or anything like yeah. that, but the truth is from what I saw from that, there's no doubt about it. Defense trumps in this league, yeah. and no matter what, you can have the perfect offense. It does not matter. Defense will always stop even the perfect offense. Yeah, Unless absolutely. every throw is perfect. I mean, we've seen great quarterback play, but nonetheless. So now so now you pick Jonathan Taylor number one. You go now. You have to wait all the way up until the last pick of the second round. Mm-hmm. Who are you taking back to back? Like what? What position are you looking for? Are I'm you, looking for going? Mark Andrews there. Uh, obviously, there's been some talk about Kelsey and him getting older, and people are doubting him. That's great. I love when people doubt players because well, Travis I'm, Kelsey. I mean, I'm a fantasy football player that doesn't. You know, I don't forget, and a lot of people forget. Like there are guys out there that I have no problem drafting. You want to give me Deshaun Watson as the very last pick in my draft? That's fine with me. That guy is suspended until week 12. Yeah. He is going to be back just in time for playoffs. So if I sit there and I don't decide to go quarterback all year long. <laughs> all year long, I don't want to go, or you know, all draft long, I don't want to get a quarterback. I want to just grab depth. I want to grab a lot of wide receivers, a lot of running backs, a lot of backups, just to have possibilities of you know just endless options, yeah. which is something that a lot of fantasy football managers will tell you runs out real quick. You know, we talk about oh, why would you get DeAndre Hopkins? You go get someone like Michael Thomas, and I don't mean to throw a name out there. And Michael Thomas gets hurt week one. You know, you're going to be praying you had someone like DeAndre oh, Hopkins yeah, coming at some point. So. You know, you try to manage that until week seven comes, and then you know you have that spot filled. So 
there's reason to grab these guys, even when they're out for a couple of weeks. So nonetheless, you know, we saw what happened with Odell. Remember Odell missed the yeah. first few weeks, and the rest is history. Same with Julio. Yeah. So you grab these rookie quarterback, rookie, you know, someone I love a lot, Jamison Williams. Yeah. This guy's on Detroit. Everyone's talking about St. Brown. I think St. Brown's a great talent. I'm not arguing. Really is, yeah. But I know Jamison Williams is another is a freak of nature. Yeah. Like, he's, <laughs> a, he's that good. So, and people will forget because he's missing the first couple of weeks. This guy's not even going drafted in a lot of leagues. Last pick in your draft, I have no problem snagging him up. I mean, yeah. it's a great pick. I've seen him show up on a few, very few fantasy drafts. A lot of people keeping him on the waiver wire. He's probably going to end up being one of the top waiver pickups when he decides to return. So it makes no sense not to draft him, not have him, you know, especially in keeper league, stuff like that. So, but. So you're going Mark Andrews. So I'm going Mark Andrews. If and he's the, there. Yes. And, then, and I'm trying to look for another running back at that point. Okay. But the people I'm staying away from, I'm staying away from Josh Jacobs. I don't want to be anywhere near that man. Uh, I yeah, just feel like the Oakland. Committee, so. Yeah, I think uh, the Oakland um, coaching staff is really valued on a committee approach with the running back position. So they really want to get a lot of people in there, and it's understandable. You want to have fresh legs at all times. So having three backs running at once, you know, if I'm a, if my job's on the line as a coach, yeah. I'm doing something similar. Unless <laughs> like obviously you have like a Jonathan Taylor, but like even Jonathan Taylor is human and he oh, yeah. needs a rest at times. So. Uh, I'm not really a big fan on him uh, around the third round. I know he's been going like – I mean, he's been dropping, actually, the more and more drafts have been going. But it's been tough because I really haven't had a pick in that area yet. Yeah. I've actually been a master of the 12th pick because that's <laughs> the only pick I've gotten so far. That's my luck in fantasy football. But uh, for one, I you know, hands down, I, I'm definitely looking at, uh, you know, on the back end there, I'm looking at Kelsey or Mark Andrews, no doubt. That's definitely someone I'm really – I mean, most likely it might not even be there. So if they're um, not there, what are you looking at? So if they, both of them – are you still looking I'm at looking, tight end? I'm looking, or no, I'm looking straight running back at that point. Um, and then go wide receiver. And the if there's pick? a possibility with a wide receiver even on that, like yeah. if Mark Andrews or yeah. Kelsey aren't available, yeah, no, a running back wide receiver is probably okay. the best approach there. I can't tell you who the best wide receiver – it's been so – there's crazy. so many. There's so many wide receivers. There's it's been so, so crazy many. though. Uh, guys have been dropping. Guys have had like yeah. it's just. Guys are really. I'm a big fan of AJ Brown, but he has an injury history. I don't like yeah. him with Jalen Hurts. I don't think Jalen Hurts is an upgrade from Ryan Tannehill. I think it's kind of like the same. So I ex- expect the same value. Yeah. I think AJ Brown will still get his numbers. The injury risk is the only thing that keeps me uh, at bay. Again, like I said, there's so many wide receivers really so if you want to go running back running back running back there i wouldn't argue it <laughs> you know especially uh there are just certain running backs that i'm like really trying to stay away from at that point um can we get a list of the uh yeah of the, of the players because i want to be able to see who's in that area because i've seen it before but obviously it's uh you know i've been having the 12th pick a lot so the first pick has really just not been uh you go to like no, you just go to cheat sheet and just go to yeah. That's exactly. I mean, we let's base this off what everyone else is going to base it off of. You know, especially online drafts. A lot of people really like to just yeah. look oh, at that ranking that's right then and there, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. There's a reason for that ranking. But uh, yeah, just go to the top. Uh, and I wouldn't even go PPR. You got half PPR. I think half PPR is more of a balanced uh, approach. I think a lot of people are going with half PPR. I mean, I'll be honest, folks. If you're still playing full PPR in your league, you're kind of playing. Uh, an a skewed league, uh, I think PPR is um, just full point. It just takes over uh, yeah. at times. Really lowers the value of a quarterback, and obviously quarterbacks need to still shit, you know, carry their value. Uh, wide receivers around that area, like they are Tyree Kill, Keenan Allen, T. Higgins, Mike Evans. I'm not, you know, I'm not hating on Mike Evans. I've had him, and I know he's an up and down player. It has nothing to do with his talent. It just nice. has to do with so many people being there. Uh, so Mike Evans, I'm not really a big fan of just because of the, uh, you know, he'll have good weeks and he could probably have a great year this year. There's no arguing it. I mean, yeah. Godwin's hurt. Julio is questionable and how productive he can even be. But I think the dropping of Tyler Johnson showed that, you know, yeah. Julio is ready to go. Uh, but again, I'm just not, Mike Evans is just a name I'm skipping. You know, names I like in this area are DJ Moore, Michael Pittman. Uh, you know, I don't mind Keenan Allen. A lot of people talk about Keenan Allen being a drop off. I, the Keenan Allen's one of the best route runners you'll ever see. Oh, yeah. There's no Absolutely. arguing that. And age doesn't stop that, man. No. The kid could still do it. You know, he's 30 years old. He's not 35. You know, he's not 40. And his age factor that I keep hearing is uh is really just an interest. And he's been doing it while he's make, making money. Yeah. And that's half the battle. Sometimes you got players that make their money and they just stop putting effort out there. Yeah. There's no question that, you know, the effort that Keenan Allen puts out there. But, uh, yeah, Tyreek Hill, not a fan. Uh, my, T. Higgins, I love. Keenan Allen, I love. DJ Moore, I love. Michael Pittman, I love. CeeDee Lamb, I love. Terry McLaurin, I love. Deontay Johnson, I love. Uh, Brandon so, Cooks, I love. Marquise so Brown, I like, but I uh, in the beginning. 
But when DeAndre Hopkins comes back, you're you're basically that early in the draft. I don't know yeah. if that's really the way to fire away. Uh, I'm definitely going Judy and Sutton over DK Metcalf, but I understand where DK's at. Yeah, I think DK Metcalf is. Uh, I've seen DK Metcalf do it yeah. without Russell Wilson already. So yeah, that's you got to know what you're getting there. But again, like I now, said, with you not liking Tyreek, does that mean you don't like Jalen Waddle either? Yeah, I'm not a fan of like the Miami. I don't know what to expect. Yeah, I really just don't know what to expect out of the Miami Dolphins. I mean, you know, both are very safe so picks. I think. Safe I think to... you could. I mean, it's safe to get those picks, but where they're going, I'm probably going to lean on the running back approach. Yeah. Now, if I could sit there and get Jonathan Taylor number one overall, and somehow pull off maybe Nick Chubb or uh, Saquon, maybe both. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm trying to think. There's a little bit of a drop off. I mean, I love Elijah Mitchell. He's definitely uh, too low. He needs to go around that area in the first round if you could pull him off. Uh, I don't hate Miles Sanders. I know a lot of people are hating on him and his injury history. I got an idea. Just grab Gainwell, yeah. and you're fine. Yeah. And you're talking about a running back situation you have taken care of with one of the best offensive lines in football. And if Miles Sanders is going to have that big of an impact, you're going to find out brutally week one. But yeah. you learn from that, you move on. You hope the rest of your team is able to carry you because fantasy football isn't won by one or two players. It's really by – you need to have a really good team and just yeah. get points in every way you can imagine. Uh, but running backs I love. You know, I love most of the top. Uh, there's no doubt about it. You know, like I said, Jonathan Taylor is going one. If I had the you number two – You kind of have to love the top because that's really – Well, because that's where that's where it kind of <laughs> yeah. runs out kind of quick. Yeah. I mean, Kamara is the only one that I'm a little uh, hesitant on because the offensive line is taking effects. But Alvin Kamara is Alvin Kamara. <laughs> yeah. He should get his numbers. Uh, a lot of people hating on DeAndre Swift. They think he's going too high. The hype's too high. I don't think the hype's too high at all. Detroit has no doubt – no doubt – increase their offensive line talent yeah. and there's no doubt that they're literally literally going to be a much better team than they've ever been yeah and they're going to really give that division at least a challenge these days because i mean i feel like green bay and minnesota they've just really just in chicago they've all abused this team in in, yeah. in previous years so this is a new year for them uh travis Etienne, i'm a little bit of a fan of there's no doubt there's no doubt that james robinson's hurt people say he'll make an impact when he comes back if uh etn's doing the right thing and you know jacksonville's finding ways to win games i don't think that changes i like etn uh Brees hall i'm not really much of a fan of i think michael carter is actually the starter for the new york jets believe it or not i think he's going to be more short range and uh goal line opportunities which gives Brees hall his value just not at rank number 20. Yeah. And that we're talking he's a number two running back. That's more like a flex option, and you're kind of hoping like a, a touchdown-dependent flex option is what I see out of Brees Hall. And I'm a Jet fan. I want to see both players do great. I hope Brees Hall is that good that he takes over the NFL. But unfortunately, I think the situation right now calls for him not uh, going a little too low right now. I think he's more like a fourth, fifth-round pick. He should be going somewhere where uh, – kind of like where Damian Pierce is going right now. Uh so I, I'm not really a fan of him. J.K. Dobbins, I'm a fan of. I think he's a little banged up. He's coming off a bad injury. Uh, I'm not sure how healthy he could stay, but I do like him with the risk where he's going, especially with running backs full. I'm telling you, they run out so quick. I mean, yeah. here we are talking about J.K. Dobbins at 21, and after that we're talking about Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, but draft on your own accord. Devin Singletary, same thing. Uh, Miles Sanders even had his, you know, he's got his doubters. I'm a fan, but he's got doubters. So yeah. Miles Sanders even. Damian Pierce, we don't know what to expect. Kareem Hunt, is he even playing for Cleveland this year? Uh, I don't think so. Ramondre Stevenson, huge fan. I think the hype's already been known. Uh, I think a lot of people are aware of this already. Um, yeah. Damian Harris is kind of fading back. I had Damian Harris last year. The guy can run. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know if it's going to be as clean as everyone's thinking with the uh, situation in New England. And I don't think New England's offense is going to be that now, great. Uh, we talk about Mac Jones. For a second, I mean, a lot of people yeah. have hyped up Mac Jones, especially a lot of breakers and a lot of uh, cards. A lot and of the hobby. Else. I don't mean to come a, off the fantasy aspect, but yeah, the hobby hype and fantasy. I mean, I know I'm cutting out of fantasy for a second, but just letting you know, Mac Jones, man, that's a card we're selling right now, boys. We yeah. need to sell this card now before the NFL starts. Well, the, the thing, the thing with Mac Jones, I think, is that you're never going to see him go any higher. He's at his ceiling. Yes, that's that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. So the hype is there. I think you get rid of the card. You got to get rid of him now. Yes, exactly. Hundred percent. I think the card, uh, the value goes down as this NFL season quickly approaches. Uh, Michael Carter going where he is. I mean, it's a steal. I think yeah. he's a starting running back that's going to get some catches out of the backfield as well. Uh, AJ Dillon, where he's going. Tony Pollard, again, huge fans. Antonio Gibson, there's no reason not to like him. I mean, he's going to be the guy, I guess. I mean, unfortunately for Brian Robinson, obviously a quick recovery, hopefully unbelievable what happened there. Yeah. Unbelievable. Like, literally the day of my draft day. 
Someone's like, no, you're not going to draft Brian. I'm like, he got shot today. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, an insane situation there. Uh, you know, we hope the best for Brian. I don't know if he's going to be playing. He's on these rankings. Yeah. Not really much of a fan. Uh, kind of need to go past that. We're looking for depth at this point. Uh, big sleepers I like. Uh, Rashad White. Um, Isaiah Pacheco, obviously. Daryl the- Henderson. Uh, Daryl Henderson is a good sleeper too. I mean, even though I, you know, he's dealing with just as much injuries as Akers yeah. right now. It's going to be a, that's, it, and the Rams did not show me that they could run the ball well. No, especially they didn't, in the no. playoffs too. So I'm not convinced on that running game at all. No matter who it is, I think that's really the more. The previous years they ran the ball well. Yeah, but they they've but lost it. Was, it. Yeah, they've lost it ever what. since. I know they, it's been lost ever since. Uh, yeah, but my deep sleepers really just go as far as that. I think uh, I'm not drafting any running backs beyond uh, Rashad White. Or Isaiah Pacheco. Zamir White is really a deep sleeper. I think something would need to happen to Josh Jacobs before that becomes uh, clear. Now, do you like Gus Edwards? Uh, Just because of what they got going on in Baltimore, you know, he did obviously I feel like if you get play. J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards is a must. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think it's someone I'm targeting. Uh, the only backup running back I think I've been targeting – that if I don't have the starter, has been Kenneth Gainwell. Obviously, yeah. I do have Michael Miles Sanders in one league, but there's another league. I don't even own him, but I wind up taking Kenneth Gainwell. I'm a big fan of him later on in the draft. So those are like my little deep sleepers at running back. But really, that whole middle of the pack there, man, there's a lot of question marks for me. Rashad Penny, I'm not really touching. James Robinson, I'm not touching. Melvin Gordon, no reason to touch. Uh, Naheem Hines, no reason to touch. Ken Walker, coming back from injury, could be a good player. He's playing for Seattle. Good luck with that. Uh, James Cook, I haven't heard any kind of hype on him at all. It shows that he is actually uh, – he has not done anything in the uh, training camp or preseason to really, you know, catch the Buffalo's coaching staff's attention, which is kind of alarming because their running game sucks to begin with. Uh, but, again, you know, running back really is something we should be taking care of really early on. Yeah, I think there's no doubt about it. So, I mean, like, the perfect example, like, you know, how we said, like, the wide receivers are so deep, the mm-hmm. running backs are so, you know, I wouldn't say weak, but just it's it's very thin. Uh, when you're looking at the wide receivers list here, we're, you could go all the way down to 65, 65 Rondell Moore. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's still a very, very good pick for you to have. I mean, I think Rondell Moore is going to be very well. Well, you look I, a I couple mean, of spots above him. You're looking at Devontae Parker. Devontae <laughs> Parker plays for the New England Patriots. Now, we just talked about Mac Jones and maybe the yeah. value not going down. I don't know if New England's going to be able to move the ball that well. But they are an NFL team. They should be able to get points. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. Um, I do know the other gentleman who was number one there. He's uh, he's hurt, bothered with an injury. I can't think of his name. He's right ahead of him. Uh, Jacoby Myers. Yes. Uh, I think he's bothered by injury right now. I think, you know, Devontae Parker has been always a good, value, yeah. you know, reliable player um, in the time that he was on the field. So, Devontae Parker's a great play late. I mean, um, I, dude, I even like – I like Sky Moore. I think Sky Moore is going to have a very sleep – like, sleeper – Type season, but it, he's gonna be ha- he's gonna have a good season because now you have to think. Listen, Mahomes doesn't have Tyreek Hill anymore, so he's gonna have to, you know, really spread the ball around. I mm-hmm. think Valdez Scantling, you know, being on Kansas City now is huge. Um, you know, you also have Juju over there. You know, Travis Kelsey. I, I think Sky Moore. You know, if he stays healthy, I think Sky Moore could really, you know, make some kind of impact. You know, whether it be you know, fantasy wise or just regular, you know, football, you know, if you're a fan of the Chiefs, I think Sky Moore is going to have, you know, and then, you know, including cards, you can add, add to that. Um, you know, I just, I think, you know, out of that draft class, he was one of the guys that was kind of overlooked. And I think he's going to have, you know, I, he was having a great camp. Um, yeah. So that's a guy to look look at, you know, even if you start to, you know, Really get low on this wide receiver list. That's that's a guy okay, that you guys can really... like Josh Palmer, Traylon Burks, yeah. uh, you know Tyler Boyd. I mean, they're one injury away from being very impactful players yeah. on really good offenses. Uh, a lot of people are hyping up Olave. I don't see it, especially with New Orleans uh, offensive line struggles. I think it really just limits him. I, I, it has nothing to do with the player. I think he's no, a great player. Yeah, Probably still in... finds a way to make some plays throughout the season Absolutely. this year. We'll definitely hear his name uh, around that area, though. DeAndre uh, is king. I think forty four over. Overall, it's just almost criminal to get him there. Uh, guys like Lazard, Robert Woods, Brandon Ayuk, Kadarius, Tony, Devontae Smith. I mean, Devontae Smith I'm a little backseat on, but Tony, Ayuk, Lazard, Hopkins, huge fans of all these guys. Elijah Moore, good fan. Uh, Drake London, you miss a few weeks. Atlanta's offense is a little questionable. You still take the chance on him, especially in dynasty leagues. Uh, 
Rashad Bateman, the opportunities there. Adam Thielen going at 34. Guys, this is what I'm talking about. There are so many wide <laughs> yeah. receivers that are capable to take care of your draft later on. I mean, now granted, you, you don't doubt the top couple of players, Cub, Jefferson, Chase, Adam, Samuel, Diggs, Lamb, Hill, and Allen. Guys, Higgins, those 10 guys, yeah. four of them are not going to be top 10 wide receivers this year. Oh, no. And I don't know why, but it happens every yeah. single season. We I'm look here. at where Michael Thomas is. He was a former top 10. We look at where DeAndre Hopkins is now. He was a former top 10. A lot of top 10 you know, wide receivers. A.J. Brown, he's not even ranked in the top 10 right now. And he's been a top 10 wide receiver before. So whenever you see guys ranked in the top 10, odds are they're not all going to end up being those – top 10 wide yeah. receivers in football. There are some misses there. Again, my prediction is obviously Tyreek Hill, uh, but and maybe even possibly Devontae Adams, just based on volume. Uh, obviously, Devontae Adams, we're used to seeing him catch 10 balls a game almost and catch 12 to 13 targets a game, which was unheard of. But I'm hearing it's a unpredictable. Lot, I'm hearing a lot about Romeo Dobbs. Yeah, I'm a big fan of him. Deep. Yep, really deep player um, there. 100%. So that's, that's another guy you know to possibly look at. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, really – and look at right above him, Jamison Williams. Yeah. These guys are definitely a value. And guys, these are really this late. is 75 and 74 on this list on, on wide receivers. That's so, one of the last picks in the draft. <laughs> yeah, like, so again, wide receiver doesn't really run yeah. out, but everything else does. Like I'm not drafting another running back beyond I would say my final guy like I talked about before with the running back was probably Isaiah Pacheco. He's ranked number 57. Yeah, I don't think there's enough. I mean, you list but there's off the a names. lot of guys that you wouldn't even take. Well, guys like you know, you know these are all me. handcuffs that you need to grab. Like guys who are getting Kamara, like you better get Mark Ingram. Yeah, and Mark Ingram looks like nothing right now. Oh, he's ranked at number fifty eight, but Kamara gets hurt, and yeah. now he goes from fifty eight to being a top twenty player. But the other, the other thing is like Alvin Kamara. Like when they get into the red zone, you a lot of the times you see uh, Mark Ingram come in. So that's an like yep. that's another thing you got to think about. There's another player I like kind of deep too, Miles Gaskin. Uh, I know Ed, Edmonds got paid. I know Chase Edmonds can get hurt. I know Miles Gaskin has shown Miami for years now, different coaching staffs, everything, especially the owner, through different coaching staffs and everything. Miles Gaskin has showed to be a pretty productive player. Yeah. So I probably Gaskin Edwards, but after that it's pretty much done. I'm not getting Jalen Warren. I'm not getting Deion Jackson or. You know, Ronald Jones is a possibility, too, again, based on whatever could happen in Kansas City. Uh, I think he's the number two behind Edwards Hilaire, and yeah. obviously Edwards Hilaire has not shown enough to really take over the no. job. Joshua Kelly, I'm not touching. Uh, there's Haskins on Tennessee. Again, guys, uh, you know, Chris Evans, Matt Breida, Keyshawn Vaughn. Uh, you know, they got a guy, Davis Price, on San Fran. I mean, he's a possibility as a yeah. deep sleeper, but – you know, we're banking on, you know, a couple of people getting hurt. I mean, but again, if you have Elijah Mitchell, grabbing this backup is not going to hurt you at all. Yeah. I mean, it solidifies your team, and I'm really a huge fan of that. Um, you want to be successful in fantasy, you got to make sure you have capable backups and so you can survive any injury going forward. Well, there you have it. I mean, you if you have your draft coming up or, you've you know, your draft has passed, um, you know, this, is, this was the perfect uh, show for you to listen in. Uh, and take this kind of uh, and take it with information. A grain of, yeah, yeah or take I, it the I mean, way you want. I mean, it's exactly. just my personal. I've always had my own rankings. Everyone listening to me right now, you should have your own rankings out yeah. there. Whatever you believe to be the best approach. I mean, again, we're you know we're all doing this you know to try to win. So obviously, you want to try and win, and it makes a huge difference. So you take the advice you know any way you can. Uh, you know, if you want to take a shot on guys like Dallas Goddard, I don't blame you. Uh, Dalton Schultz getting hyped up a lot. Um, George Kittle, Darren Waller, I'm, you know, Cole Komet. Uh, I'm not taking anybody on Chicago this year. That's me personally. Um, Zach Ertz, I don't know how long he's going to be good for. And then the drop off's kind of pretty bad. You got guys like Evan Ingram in Jacksonville, Tyler Higg being a – you know, David Njoku, actually, I, can, I don't mind either in Cleveland, especially when Deshaun Watson returns. I think that could be a good uh, – playoff tight end even so like again there are reasons to draft all these different kind of guys but uh you know you take the advice any way you can you just try to do your best while you're uh, out there whatever pick you get just find a way to manage absolutely so that will end it with the fantasy but quick uh points when it comes to the hobby and and sports cards justin herbert 2020 one of one prism finally pulled um Damn. by vortex sports cards i believe it is um now for some context with that, a PSA 6 Trevor Lawrence of that same card 
sold for 150k, a PSA six. How huge is this card? I mean that this card. I would have to say, being that it's a, it, you know, if you get a, a ten, this this could go for like 500, 600 grand. You know wow. that 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 kind of card. So um, incredible. We also had the the um, the record broken for the most um, money spent on or you know sold for a card, but also when we look at this, it's not just cards. It is sports memorabilia as a whole. The most money spent on it. 1952 Mickey Mantle CSG. Is it or SGC? I mean, nine point five. Very difficult to get a card in 9.5. Yeah. Especially that old. For $12.6 million. Incredible. Um, so, and and when I went to the uh, the National, there is a PSA 10 of this card. And it's owned by an owner of a baseball team. I forget which, which team it is. I think it's the Arizona Diamondbacks, but I don't want to put that out there and be wrong about it. Um, and they, they believe that, <laughs> yeah. They believe that card is like estimated at $30 million. That's insane. Um, so before we get off initial thoughts on Madden 23, uh, you know, I like Being that you have series X, I have Xbox one. Okay. I'm a fan. Might. I'm a fan of the uh, gameplay. I really am. I think it's balanced out the game. I think it's not one of those where if you have the offense late in the game, you're guaranteed yeah. to win the game, which it's always had. People have always had that mindset. Uh, sometimes you actually prefer to have your defense on the field late. Yeah. So it's actually, uh, it's a good change of dynamic. The one thing I'm very upset about is, uh, you know, just delay with rewards. There's uh, delays in the reward system and just, you know, a couple of kinks. There's a couple of little glitches. I saw somebody take a kickoff, uh, run it behind the end zone. It ended up being a safety for some yeah. reason. So he got the ball back, got plus two points, and now I'm punting it to him. It was a whole thing. So, you know, there's some kinks. But obviously, this is the kind of stuff that Madden will adjust to. Obviously, the more we continue to talk about it, the more we tweet about it, uh, you know, things, things, things will get things will get repaired. Yes, will be changed. They'll get repaired, and uh, you know. But uh, overall, I think the game is uh, it's not a bad game. There's a lot of hate on it right now, but I think it's a lot of those people that are used to being happy getting the ball yeah. late in the fourth quarter and being able to score at will with their plays that worked all the time. Yeah. So the fact that they, you know, don't work, I agree with that. Becomes I, a big I feel impact. as though um, defense is tougher. Uh, to to go up against, of course, you know when it comes a lot to the more offense. interceptions than ever before because yeah. a lot of these guys are trying to make these throws that they made in twenty twenty two in twenty twenty one Madden twenty and now they can't make the throws anymore and it has people adjust. You got to be able to run the football well. You got to be able to just keep the defense guessing and you don't yeah. want really the defense knowing what you're going to do. So in my opinion on the game, uh, it's a little rough, I will say, but I also have the Xbox One version, so the, it it seems as though they didn't spend much time on that. And uh, yeah. I feel as though the players are a lot more bulky. Like, I mean, the linemen are look like 600-pound guys. You need it, to get Series it, X. I, yeah, I know. I, I, I really That's really do. the end of that but, conversation. <laughs> <laughs> That's really but the extent. Some of the, the, the releases <laughs> that we had in Mutt this week, uh, we had Campus Heroes come out. You get a free Tim Tebow, 79, that you can get, um, like, stickers to put on him to make him up to an 87. Yeah, I've seen uh, him plenty of times. You get a limited 90 overall Ricky Williams, and you also added the two. The, you get the two champions, which is a 90 overall Michael Crabtree and a 90 overall Derek Johnson. All other teams, all 32 teams, got eight uh, ranked 87 overall players, uh, one per team. I'm not going to go through all of that. Um, then we got some legends also. The 89 overall players, Andre Reed. Jerome Bettis, Jay Hilgenberg, Anthony Munez, Lester Hayes, Mike Vrabel, Steve Atwater, Deacon Jones. Uh, I don't have any of them. Yeah. But even if you have them, good luck. Yeah. And, like, if you're starting to make, like, theme teams, um, you know, you can start seeing those teams start to take shape now. Of course. You know, with, Absolutely. with some of these higher overalls coming out. And then, like, you know, how they did with Campus Heroes having one per yep. team. So, um, but yeah, uh, let us know what you feel about Madden. If you got any questions about fantasy, Madden, or cards, let us know. Uh, Ruts Sports on Instagram, Twitter, um, TikTok. Then you can also follow us if you're into the hobby. Ruts Breaks, Ruts Rips, both on Instagram and Twitter. Um, Ruts Breaks on TikTok as well. 
we're all over now. Now we we literally, like I said, we have our foot in every single thing when it comes to football. Uh, we're your one stop, one stop shop. I yeah, guess. Yeah, I, I was waiting for the shop. <laughs> yeah. You didn't know the shop in there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so you know, you basically say, you know, we're the shit. Hey. Yeah. Hopefully, we can uh, continue to. Uh, yeah. If you got any you questions, I mean, we gladly we will bring them up uh, on the show. I think we may have a guest next week. I don't want to, you know, jump ahead of things, but we may have a guest next week. Uh, it'll be interesting, uh, especially if you're in the hobby. But that'll do it for Ruts Spouts. <laughs> uh, I'm Jerry. I'm Kevin. Be breezy. Be breezy. And it is all over. You've been listening to Running Up the Score. We run up the score on Sports Radio.